Hey, have you ever wondered what kind of students are good at learning English? In this video, I'm going to dive into this topic and share with you three things that you can do to create your own English learning environment. And most importantly, have fun with it. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Miss Sarah. I'm a registered English teacher in Hong Kong, and welcome back to my channel. I like to ask my students on multiple occasions what kind of students are good in English. And I can pretty much summarize the response into three categories. Let's see if they resonate with you. Number one, students whose parents are rich because their parents can take them to Western countries or have helper at home who speaks English with them all the time. Join tutorials if they need to. So if my parents are rich, my English will be good too. The second most common response was they read a lot of English books. And number three, they are good at memorizing English vocabulary. So they're good at learning English. But what if I told you I didn't have any of the above three things when I started out and learned English as a second language? I came from a very humble family background. We lived in rented apartment, then later public housing. In short, my parents have no spare cash to send me to tutorials, let alone going overseas. And what about helper? Well, I guess I was the helper at home at the time, and I talked to my mother in her hometown dialect. So yeah, not English. I didn't read many English books either. Maybe just those readers your school, your school picked for you, or the textbooks. Or maybe only just the night before the exam, I might take a look. Hell, I didn't even like going to the library to borrow, you know, English books. I mean, to be honest, who want to borrow and carry English books home when I know I won't be able to read by myself? And as for number three, memorizing vocabulary. Now, to be very honest, who have the time to memorize five new vocab every day? Like, who even want to do that? The only time I will memorize was for dictations or if there's any recitation that week. If not, like, memorizing vocabulary was so not happening. Okay, okay, enough with the rambling. So what did I do? Actually, it's very simple. I had the assumption that people coming from the West are all very good at English. So what I did was just replicate what they have that I don't. So what is it? The answer is English environment. Like when I was in the UK, I know it will kickstart my English in a way that it wouldn't happen in Hong Kong. Just going to the supermarket to shop requires English. Asking for direction how to get there, how to order food at restaurants. Well, it's better in Chinatown. But like everything you need doing in your life requires English. So how can you not improve? Because you literally need to apply your broken English anywhere you go and every time you're hungry. And that happens to me a lot back then. So now we've established the importance of English environment. So how can you create your own English environment? What you can do is pick something you use on a daily basis, like your phone, email, social media to start with. Change your phone setting, your email setting, social media account, all into English even with playing games. If you like Minecraft or Roblox, set it to English. My God, there are so many vocabs that I don't know in English can be found on Minecraft. Like I'm such a noob in gaming. See the word noob, though it might be a gaming word, but it is used in daily lives in conversation. Number two, read, write, listen, and speak in English. I used to love a boy band based in the US when I was a student. I will search for them online, reading up on their news, their whereabouts, even though I know I couldn't afford to be in the US, but listening to their songs, reciting all their lyrics, reading up articles about them, just like any good fans will do. I had done them all. I even had a news clipping art book that I made featuring their close-up headshots, writing a little captions here and there, and my art book would just keep on growing, pages after pages, and I absolutely loved it. So just find out what interests you the most and do all that in English. If you like Cantonese stuff, say, Mira, can you find articles online or magazines to read? Comments from podcasts listen to in English and then chat with your friends about Anson Lo in English? It's all good. Lately, I've finished watching this Korean drama, The Ghost Doctor, with English subtitles. So good. Number three, interact with people in English. I used to have a study buddy back in my schooling days. We made a pact. We agreed that we'll use English with each other. We literally speak to each other in English, in lessons, during lunch, after school, maximizing all the possible hours that we were together. 
Now I know this might be weird, especially in school settings. Students are in general don't like to do that because they might get laughed at. But I think once you have your goal determined, you just stick with it. Because achieving your goal is more important than being laughed at, right? I mean, who cares what others think? The most important thing is, let's see who's laughing last. Oh, and one idiom for you, he who laughs last, laughs longest. So why not? Anyway, I hope this video is inspiring. Learning a language is not rocket science. There's nothing fancy and definitely no magic wand which you can just wish and then improve overnight. You gotta be active about it. Use it or lose it. But just remember, you don't need to be rich to learn English and you definitely don't need to learn English in a boring way. It worked for me and I know it worked for you as long as you keep it consistent. Stay on the path and check out my other videos on vocabulary learning and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!